and welcome to the show. Let me start by saying that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Today is November 25th, 2022, and the story of MMTLP is coming to a close. We have two weeks of trading left on OTC markets, and we'll be talking about dates and things like that in this video. If you're not familiar with what MMTLP is, we're talking about some oil and gas assets that are going to be spun out into a company called Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. From uh, the, this, These oil and gas assets came together from the merger of Torchlight Energy and Metamaterials. So if you own the stock symbol MMTLP, you will be getting uh, Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. Uh, we're talking about 3.2 billion barrels of oil in the ground and some natural gas is a 49% revenue interest in this. This, you know, these assets are located in El Paso, Texas. There's a marathon refinery in El Paso. The nice thing about this is you do not need a, a federal lease to access the oil and gas. This is what's called private land in Texas. So we're talking about 3.2 billion barrels of oil in Texas. Um, I've got some videos about how this, um, you know, how these assets came into being and how it uh, how it became available to us as shareholders. Um, we've, uh, you can access those videos, Thoughts on Oil Part 2 and Thoughts on Oil Part 3. They talk about uh, the story of Torchlight Energy, Metamaterials, the MMTLP shares, and Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. And um, the... Uh, the video on the left that you can see over here is the founder's B19 well number well uh, well number one. And it's drone footage from Torchlight Energy Archives. Uh, so yeah, there's a bunch of oil and gas there. <laughs> anyway, I've got some more. Uh, I've got some videos for people who are brand new to MMTLP and they just want to get a quick update. Uh, check out one year of trading on OTC markets. We also have uh, have some videos about um, you know how to avoid uh, how to avoid having your stop losses being triggered, and an FAQ for uh, for new investors to MMTLP. I suggest you check them out because not everything is obvious. If you, even if you're an old hat at investing, not everything is obvious with MMTLP. Finally, with this entire spin-out process, uh, we're talking about filings with the SEC. I've got a bunch of videos about the S1 filings, which go into detail about what uh, you know what's going to happen, you know how much you know how many shares there are, etc. All, all the information is in these um, is in these these videos about the S1 filing process. We have um, we have Amendment Number Four that's been filed, and not only that, we have now. A, for, a form 424B that has been filed, which means we now have dates. We now have dates. And um, one other thing I would uh, recommend you guys check out is uh, a video from from Bird Lady Roller Pigeons. She has um, she talked about the 424B pr uh, prospectus, and she also talks about uh, you know what. We, at what time shorts will need to close their positions. It's it's a recommended video by me. I would uh, I would definitely check it out if you have not seen it yet. So, uh, I mentioned filings by the SEC. This is the SEC website for Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. If you want to file, if you want to see all the documents, you have to look for Nextbridge Hydrocarbons under the SEC website. You will see all of these filings. The last one is the 424B, which is an update to the S1A or the S1 amendment number four. So the S1 is effective and the 424B fills in the dates. This is uh, this is what the 424B looks like. Basically there was a slight, a slight adjustment to the total number of shares by 51,000 shares of common stock, uh, which were, um, which was, uh, let's see. Uh, so th they cancel some shares, basically, uh, or a few, or a few shares. I think they cancel they cancel fifty one thousand shares. Um, no big deal. It's pretty minor. In either case, they go over uh, the dates, especially over here, and they talk about essentially what they've added is some info that is also available from the um, from the Meta Materials News site, uh, which in which case they talked about the Series A preferred stock, which is currently traded. Uh, over the counter under, under the symbol MMTLP. They talked about Nextbridge Hydrocarbons, which will be an independent publicly reporting company. And the Nextbridge common stock is not and will not be publicly tra traded. So the, it will be a publicly reporting company, but it will not be publicly traded. And it won't be using the DTCC book entry system or any other established clearing corporation, right? 
So if you have the Series A preferred stock, also known as MMTLP, as of December 12th, 2022, which is the record date for the distribution, you will be entitled to receive one share of NextBridge common stock for every share of Series A preferred stock that is held there. Now you have to hold those shares all the way up, up until December 14th of 2022, after which um, shares will be distributed to uh, to the holders, right? And um, at uh, so after December 14th, 2022, after the close of, of trading markets, all the shares of the Series A preferred stock will be canceled. The holders of the Series A preferred stock will cease to have any rights with respect to any shares of that. And um, the shares of the Series A preferred stock, MMTLP, will no longer be tradable on the OTC market. At that point, NextBridge Hydrocarbons shares will be distributed. Okay, that's what's called the distribution date. And um, I made a quick update ab about this on the community um, on the community board for on YouTube, where where we talk about that. Uh, basically, what this means is that shorts must close, and they have to buy to close before that happens, right? But the question is, before what happens, right? Because we have multiple dates, right? We know that we will be trading, right, uh, uh, for at least two weeks, and we could be trading all the way up until the 9th. Now, do shorts have to close on the 9th, the 12th, the 14th? I believe that depends on the broker, right? It depends on the, which broker the shorts hold their positions with. So each broker might be a little bit different. Some brokers will ask you, will ask the shorts to close their positions all the way up until the 9th. And if they don't, then they'll start closing on the 12th. And they and and if the broker closes for the shorts, that means that they will go out and they will buy to close if the shorts do not have enough funds to, um, you know, to, to, to cover that buying, they will sell assets that the shorts have in order to, you know, to close the position. If they don't have enough assets to close their position, that means that, that those shorts will have received a margin call before they run out of assets. And they may get margin called before then, right? So, so again, all of this depends on the brokers. So there will be about two weeks of trading before, you know, where the shorts can voluntarily close. But during those two weeks, I would expect FUD attacks followed by short attacks, right? If you saw my previous video, you you understand what FUD attacks are. This these this is uh, this is trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt among shareholders, and that causes them to become uncertain of their position. Usually, these FUD attacks can easily be countered by just looking up some older material. Like, for instance, there was the uh, talk that John Berta gave about the MMT LP shares, and uh, I, you know, that that just cancels out the FUD attacks. But in either case, uh, the FUD will be generally disinformation, incorrect information, confusing information, all sorts of stuff, right? And the FUD attacks are usually followed by a short attack. And the short attacks are stuff like, you know, stuff that you've seen before. Generally, they what they want to do with the short attacks is they want to trigger stop losses. I have a video about stop losses and MMTLP stop losses. If you don't know what stop losses are, check out that video. But in general, what they want to do is they want to force you to sell your shares automatically by by dropping the price below what your stop loss order is, right? And they do that by by selling large quantities of shares. Okay, it gets them that gets them more um, uh, you know that increases their short position. However, they wind up getting you to sell your shares, at which point you drop the price further, and then they can possibly decrease their you know their overall short their overall short position. So don't be surprised if shorts, if shorts attack in the following two weeks and they try to hit your stop losses. Uh, I would expect that, that that is pretty likely to happen. But again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. So toward that end that I, uh, I mentioned that it's the brokers that actually you know, will deter, it's the brokers for the shorts that will actually determine when that they need to close their positions by. I, uh, I made a posting to Reddit uh, uh, to the Fidelity to here to the Fidelity Instruments R Fidelity Instruments uh, subgroup, and the reason I posted there is that that is an official Fidelity customer care channel. Uh, I will get a response from Fidelity representatives, which means I will get a response from, from Fidelity itself. So. Basically, I asked the question, you know, if a client currently holds a short position in MMTLP, 
does that client have to close by to close their short position? And if so, by what date, right? And, um, uh, and I gave the overall, um, uh, the, the upfront information about the, the form 442 that has been filed. I gave the information upfront about that, you know, the information that Nextbridge Hydrocarbons will become an independent publicly reported company, but the Nextbridge common stock is not and will not be publicly traded and will not be eligible for electronic funds transfer through the Depository Trust Corporation book entry system or any other clearing corporation. And um, and that's about it. And I gave a and I gave the dates of the, you know the distribution dates and the the date of record. So I gave all that information, uh, and uh, and I asked the question, you know, do the shorts have to close their position in MMTLP, and at what you know, and if so, by what date? Right. I expect an answer from Fidelity. I also gave them links to the information so they can research this themselves, of course. I wasn't expecting an, uh, a pat answer from MMTLP because it's very close. But what I did get is uh, is very intriguing. Uh, I got a, a response from Samantha at Fidelity. So thank you, Samantha. She said, welcome to the subreddit and thanks for the question today. As of now, we have not received any updated instructions on this merger from the transfer agent. At, as the announcement was made on 11-23-2022, we are likely not to receive updated instructions for 24 to 48 hours. Therefore, we won't make assumptions on how shares that have been shorted will be treated. Additionally, additionally with the holiday uh, yesterday, we recommend checking back with us late next week. So sometime next week, they will have information. I will check on that and, uh, and post on Twitter and, po and you know, probably do an update on, on YouTube if, uh, you know, once I get information from Fidelity. But this is a public, um, this is a public forum. You can check this uh, website yourself to see if they've, uh, if, if they've updated their responses. So, uh, so with that, uh, uh, so I believe that shorts will have to close their position. And um, this was on the community. So I posted this on the community um, uh, site of, um, of my YouTube channel. And I got an interesting response from Ordinary Angler. Thank you, Ordinary Angler, for your question, actually. And uh, Ordinary Angler said, uh, Tony, Quest, uh, uh, question for you. I contacted TD Ameritrade with several questions, but was quickly told by two different reps that since MMTLP was listed on the OTC, it was not able to be shorted. I couldn't believe what I was being told, so I read uh, to one of them the statement by the whale you showed who had 17.8 million shares that TD had stopped his ability to buy and was pressing him to loan or sell his shares. After that, she couldn't explain. Just thought you'd like to know what TD is saying. So, um, so not everyone at the broker will know everything that's going on about every single stock. You wouldn't expect that necessarily. Um, chances are they just got, uh, you know, a, a customer representative who wants to, you know, help them about, you know, how to trade a stock or something like that. Right. So not everyone is an expert on every stock, of course, but, um, but what's interesting is that they didn't uh, even know that it was, uh, it was possible to short it. But uh, so I said, well, I guess I'd be surprised that there are currently 20,000 shares available to borrow at a fee of 38.6% as per iBorrowDesk.com. If you look at iBorrowDesk under MMTLP, you'll see this chart, of course. And what this chart will show is in blue, you see the available number of shares to borrow. And you see what the borrow fee is on the right in red. And as you can see, the borrow fee has gone over 50%. And... Uh, and if you look at the number of shares short, uh, there are a large number of shares short. However, there's not that much left right now. Right? Uh, in uh, what's interesting is that uh, on the twenty on eleven twenty four, there were six hundred and fifty thousand shares available to short, and the borrow fee there was thirty five point eight percent. But a little bit later, there were only twenty five thousand shares available to short, with the borrow fee not changing very much. Right. What that says to me is that 625 shares of MMTLP were probably borrowed, okay? And if they were borrowed, that means they were borrowed for shorting purposes. And if they were borrowed to, for shorting purposes, you know, we know that there's a T plus 2 settlement, otherwise you get something called a failure to deliver. So if we look back at 1122, that's when uh, the shares were probably shorted, okay? And if we look at the, uh, the price history of MMTLP, we go back to 11.22, and sure enough, wow, there was a massive price drop there when 625,000 shares were borrowed 
for fail for you know to deal with the failures to deliver <laughs> as a result of that right that's where the shares were shorted on 11.22 we can see a massive drop in price i'm sure you're all aware of this but it went from $12 down to way below uh you know way below $10 it went all the way down to like $9 and like what you know under $9.40 for a little bit but uh, yeah there was a massive short attack then and uh, we can see from the amount of shares available, right, you know, w w where the shorts, you know, what's being attacked, right? We can also see from the previous, uh, you know, from the previous slides that um, the short borrow fees change, right? Uh, at one point, the short borrow fee went from 59.2% down to 37.7%. Uh, so the borrow fees for shorting at that point were 59.2%, right? So the shorts were very desperate to borrow. And chances are what happened is that they were very desperate to cover and avoid closing, right? So if you have to close your short position, that's different from covering your short position. Covering means that you located some shares or you borrowed some shares. You can keep your short position open. Closing means you have to buy to close. You have to buy the shares. That's it. You're done. So there was a lot of, uh, a lot of people trying to cover at that point, and apparently enough people did cover. Now... If you note, the number of shares did not change that much. And 650,000 shares, by the way, is not that much shares. So I believe this information is from, you know, one or two major brokers, but not from all brokers, right? So this iBorrow desk is probably similar to what's known as Finred, um, Fintel data, which looks at a major broker and how many shares are available to short from there. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, there are other times when we see the number of shares drop significantly in terms of, um, the shares available without seeing the, uh, you know, without seeing the fee change very much. Like for instance, when the fee was at 59.2% on the 23rd, there were 45,000 shares and then suddenly there were only 6,000 shares, but the fee didn't change or anything like that. So what that meant is that those 39,000 shares that were available to be shorted, uh, were borrowed, right? Those th those shares that were available to be to be borrowed were borrowed, and that's because thirty. You know, there was a whole bunch of shares that were shorted uh, T plus two days earlier, right? That that's the way that works. So you can have a look at these, um, you know, at I borrow desk data, and you can backtrack and give it, you know, have an idea of you know when the short attacks happen just by looking at I borrow desk data. Also, you can you can see when short attacks happen by looking at FUD, right? When they you know when they have a bunch of FUD coming out. That's when short attacks will happen, likely. Interestingly enough, there was a time when there was, you know, just on 11.23, there were 6,000 shares available. And um, suddenly we see the number of sh shares available increase dramatically to 650,000 shares. And yet we did not see the borrow fee change at all. Okay. So that meant 646,000 shares became available. Okay. But the borrow fee did not change. So what happened? This, these were not shares that were returned. These were not people that, you know, said, said, hey, I don't need to borrow these shares anymore. I'm going to close my short position because it's done. This instead was uh, the broker saying, hey, look, I can get a nice whopping 37.1% borrow fee from this. I'm going to see if I can find some more shares available and try to, you know, give it to these shorts. So that's what's happening. That was, uh, you know, brokers calling around and saying, hey, would you like to uh, participate in our share lending program? <laughs> and if you say yes, yes, you'll get, you know, maybe 5%, 10%, and the broker will take, I don't know, maybe 30%. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the price of MMTLP will be pushed down, and uh, but they'll make a nice, you know, a nice 30%. You'll, uh, you'll make a nice 5 or 10%, and, um, and the price of MMTLP will be suppressed dramatically. So, um, so that's what's been going on. Expect short attacks. Um, if you have... Uh, you know, if you have your, if you have stop losses open, they will likely be triggered. That's that's the way stop loss harvesting works, and that's the way short attacks work. And um, although the, the the story of MMTLP is coming to a close, I believe that there is, is another story called the double squeeze, which is MMTLP and MMAT, which you may want to check out uh, that video about. And um, let me end this video by saying that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. It is November 25th, 2022. Uh, I hope to see you on the moon. This is Market Moves, and my name is Tony. So, goodbye.